When we start the game, you'll notice that the hero is already carrying the egg, which is a bit of a mistake. In the game, we want the hero to collect the egg at the point when it drops and he moves underneath it. So to control that, let's add a variable. Hero egg is the variable that we'll use to control this. Move down to the set title function. And in the set title function, we'll just add hero egg equals false because we don't want it to be visible when we start off. Now we'll scroll down to the hero move function. Add this code to the first line. This sets the visibility of the egg inside the hero symbol to the value of the hero egg variable. So let's see that in action. Save the page and preview it in your browser. We start the game and this time we can see that the egg is missing. And when we walk, it's the same then as well. So now we need to get the hero to collide with the egg when it drops from the pterodactyl and at that point collect the egg. In order for us to work out our collision detection, we need to use a little bit of Pythagoras theory. So I've drawn a diagram here on the screen to help us understand exactly what's going on. Now, the code behind this is fairly simple, but it looks more complex than what it is. So if you don't get the code, you don't really have to worry about it too much. You just have to know that it works and that you can use it anywhere else and it will do exactly the same thing. So what we do is calculate a triangle between the character and whatever object we want them to collide with. And in this case, it's going to be the egg. But we're going to use the same code later on to calculate the collision between the hero and the nest. So you can see that it's already going to be very useful to us. And what we do at this particular point is calculate the radius around each of the objects. Now, this doesn't have to be exactly around the objects, it just has to be somewhere within the object that kind of looks like it would be a good point to do collision detection with. Now, none of this is seen on the screen at all. It's all calculations that are made by the computer. The magic that happens is that when these two things collide and those collision points or those radiuses overlap, it fires off a collision. And that's what we're going to do in our code next. We'll move back into Dreamweaver and scroll to the bottom of our code. And just before the final script tag, we're going to create our new function here. This function is going to handle that collision with the hero that we were just talking about. So we create the collision hero function and we're expecting three commands to be passed forward into this. The X position of the object we want to collide with the hero, the Y position of the object we want to collide with the hero and the radius that we want to set for that object. If you look at something like the egg, the radius of that is very small. And if you look at the nest, the radius of that is very big. So we can pass in a separate radius for each one. We already know how wide the hero is. So we've already got the radius for that. And we'll just grab the hero's X and Y position inside this function. In these two lines of code, we're just putting into a temporary variable the distance on the x-axis and the distance on the y-axis between the x-position of the object we want to collide with our hero and the y-position. The next line of code gets the distance in the radius. It's the radius of the object and the radius of the hero. The if statement just asks if the distance on the x times the distance on the x added to the distance y times the distance on the y is less than or equal the distance radius times the distance radius. And what that actually will do is if that's true, then we go to this line here and we're going to return true. So we're going to use the collision hero as an if statement and it should bring back true. And if collision hero is true, then we know we've got a collision. So we can call that inside our code. Like I say, it's not something that you have to really fully grasp and understand, but if you do understand it, then it becomes a very powerful tool that enables us to be able to do collision detection. Now we need to move up to the egg control function. Locate the line that has egg.y plus equals four and hit return. We're going to add our collision if statement in here. So 
So what we're saying here is if collision hero with the egg on its x, the egg's y and its radius of 18, and we've not got the egg already, then we're going to do something here. We only want to ever hold one egg at a time with our hero. So the first thing we'll do is increase our score because we want to reward them for collecting the egg at this point. So we're rewarding them at the point where they tap the enemy and it releases the egg. We want to reward them at the point when they collect the egg and we're actually going to reward them at the point when they return the egg to the nest. There's three times they can be rewarded. At this point, we want to turn on the variable hero egg because we want the hero to actually be holding the egg. So we want it to look like the hero's collected the egg at this point. Now the egg is still on the screen, so we want to move it off the screen. And we want to turn off the fact that we're dropping the egg. So this if statement won't be true anymore. Let's save that and let's preview that in the browser. And as you can see, when we collect the egg, it actually looks as if the character is now holding the egg. This time it splats because we're already holding the egg and we only want to ever hold one at a time. In our next lesson, we're going to do the collision detection so that we can collide with the nest and return the eggs back into the nest.